Shocking. Elon Musk and NASA just made an insane discovery on Mars. In case you haven't heard, NASA recently made a discovery on Mars that could change the game for SpaceX. What has NASA discovered on Mars? How will NASA's discovery affect Musk's plans? These are the questions that have been plaguing the minds of people around the world since last week. So, let's find out. Welcome to the Space Invaders, your home for all things space and cosmology. Whether you're a casual viewer or a hardcore enthusiast, we've got something for you. We'll be talking about everything from the latest discoveries in exoplanet research to the most recent news about NASA's missions to Mars. NASA's tenacity allows us to get closer rover may have just made a breakthrough and this fresh discovery may alter Elon Musk's ambition to colonize Mars. Recent Mars rover's discoveries may contain microbial fingerprints in most of their observations, indicating that Earth is not the only site in the solar system where life may exist. Perseverance rover has already secured some potentially revelatory samples containing organic matter. The presence of organic matter isn't slam-dunk evidence of life on the Red Planet, but it is a distinctly promising sign and, perhaps most tellingly, agency scientists seem uncharacteristically excited. Since July, the indefatigable rover has been roaming a dried-up river delta in the 28-mile Jezero crater, believed to have been home to a lake billions of years ago. So far, Perseverance has managed to collect four of these fluvial samples, which according to NASA scientists, boast the highest concentration of organic matter since the rover began its Martian mission 18 months ago. What makes the samples such a great boon is the delta they were collected from. Where a river once flowed into the lake, it also deposited tons of sediment in distinct layers, making the delta ground a terrific preservation of Mars' historical environment. Among the rocks sampled is a small formation of stone dubbed Wildcat Ridge, thought to have been formed at the bottom of the extinct lake when it was still around. In addition to collecting two rock core samples, Perseverance chipped away at the ridge and scanned the exposed interior of the stone using a specialized laser instrument known as Sherlock. What it found was organic molecules related to sulfate, likely meaning that as the lake was drying up, that particular area became highly concentrated in both sulfate and organics. And when it comes to preserving organics, sulfate is king. On Earth, sulfate deposits are known to conserve organics and can harbor signs of life, which are called biosignatures, explained Sherlock scientist Sun Ina Sharma, who works at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, at the conference. This makes these samples and this set of observations some of the most intriguing that we've done so far in the mission and fulfills some of the excitement that the team had when we were approaching the Delta Front. As exciting as this all sounds, it's still possible that the compounds aren't the vestiges of former life and instead could have been formed through chemical or geological processes. And nailing down a definitive answer could take some time. As robust as Perseverance has proven to be, the rover isn't equipped with the kind of scientific instruments necessary to declare the samples as containing biosignatures beyond a shadow of doubt. Instead, scientists will have to wait for the samples to be transported back home via NASA's Mars Sample Return Mission, which isn't currently scheduled to arrive back on terrestrial soil until at least 2033. Until then, Perseverance will continue to tirelessly collect more samples and preliminarily analyze the rocks of the now desolate Martian surface. Even off-world, hope springs eternal. The next step in the search for life on Mars, according to scientists, is to bring samples of the planet back to laboratories on Earth where the best tools available can search for answers to one of humanity's oldest mysteries. To bring the first samples from Mars back to Earth, NASA and the European Space Agency have an elaborate plan involving a fleet of robots, including the Perseverance rover, a new Martian lander, a sample-catching spacecraft and two tiny helicopters. The two space agencies simplified the original Mars sample return campaign mission, removing a sample fetch rover and its associated lander. NASA and ESA managers said they changed the plan because of the expected longevity of Perseverance and the Ingenuity helicopter's success, which has now completed 29 flights on Mars. NASA Science Mission Directorate Associate Administrator Thomas Zerbichin said the plan was always to have two methods of getting the samples back to Earth, using Perseverance or another rover for the handoff. Instead of an additional rover, the plan is to use two tiny helicopters as the backup option and Percy as the primary. The rover is the primary means to get the samples to the sample retrieval lander, which will carry the Mars Ascent vehicle and ESA's robotic transfer arm. 
Percy will also deposit a sample cache in the River Delta as an insurance policy option before moving on to more ancient terrain on Mars. Future missions could pick up those samples. The ultimate goal is to get the first Mars soil and rock samples back to Earth for a detailed analysis. Sharma said bringing the rock cores back to Earth is the surest way to confirm the organic matter the science team believes it is found in the Mars rock samples. However, it does not mean there could have been life. It simply means there could be chances of some unique discoveries hiding in the future when these samples arrive on Earth in the final years of this decade or the early years of the next. NASA astronaut Stanley Luff said that life on Mars would initially be horrible and that he has no plans to join the first batch of humans leaving for Elon Musk's colony. During an interview with the U.S. Sun, the astronaut admitted that settling on the Red Planet is indeed possible, but the conditions would be not something to look forward to. He also opined that Musk's goal of sending 1 million humans to Mars by 2050 is unrealistic. Even Musk admits that the first few astronauts would face extremely difficult circumstances during their trip and on the planet. He even said that some might not make it back, but the conditions will become relatively easier over time. During an interview with the head of TED Conference's Chris Anderson, Musk said that his aerospace company SpaceX would launch thousands of starships, with about 100 people in each, every two years in the 2030s to establish a sustainable presence on the Red Planet. During a podcast with MIT scientist Lex Friedman, the billionaire also got candid about his Mars aspirations and said that he won't send astronauts to Mars just to put flags and footprints. To get the job done, SpaceX is developing the Mega Rocket Starship at the Starbase facility in Texas before it takes off for the first time possibly later this year. Elon Musk pointed out the year 2026 as the year he would be able to transport people to Mars through his SpaceX company. He added that it may even happen earlier if we are lucky. This seems a bit overambitious. But recently NASA reported that they designed a device the size of a lunchbox that can transport carbon dioxide to Mars. The device can produce oxygen by converting carbon dioxide. The Mars Oxygen In-Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, or MOXIE, is the name of the project that's made public now. According to NASA, the device can produce oxygen around the equivalent of a small tree. While NASA tested oxygen production at different times of the day, at different seasons, and at night, they found out we can produce oxygen equally. The production of oxygen on Mars is boosting Elon Musk's dream of visiting Mars and being able to come back from there. The oxygen production can fuel a rocket for launching for a return. It means that astronauts can walk on Mars without initially using any breathing devices. That's amazing. Outro. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and want to see more, please like, share and subscribe. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.